Hello and welcome to TA Med Simple with psychotherapist Bob Cook. And Bob Cook, he's got a talent for explaining the elements of transactional analysis in very straightforward terms. It's great if you're a student of TA, you can watch this and uh, you can get some free learning, free information, maybe help you with assignments, maybe help you um, with your practice. And we're going to look at something that uh, we're going to resurrect something today, aren't we, Bob? Yeah, we something are, that's yeah. not really talked about that much. Egograms, the work of Jacques Busay. Am I right? Jacques Busay. Jacques Busay. Jacques Busay. And around 1972, and off camera, you were telling me that um, you, you were you taught about egograms and how to do egograms when you trade. But now mm -hmm. it's almost kind of non existent. Non -existent. Why do you think that is, Bob? Well, yeah, I, I think primarily because of the rise of relational transaction analysis, the rise, the rise of integrated transaction analysis, mm -hmm. the move away from behavioral diagnosis, which ego states really are. They don't really um, figure in relational transaction analysis. Um, and a bit like, you know, when you use some of the diagnostic models out of TA, so like core nine, core 10, a lot of the computer behavioral stuff but uh, i think it just got lost because of the rise of relational ta and different forms of ta but the behavioral diagnosis of ego states which is what it is which i'm going to talk about in a minute uh, disappeared from the literature and i think quite quickly because i did uh, for every client i did an ego gram which i'm going to explain in a minute but by that's 1985 i started by 1990 1991 I think they sort of disappeared. 2019 now, isn't it? I don't. I bet if you asked any of them, to, modern TA therapists, younger TA therapists, any, they wouldn't even probably know. Sure. But I want to talk about it because it's so useful. Yeah, it's interesting. There's, there's a couple of things there. The first is, is that of course TA um, it was was almost a, a cognitive behavioural model, the way that Byrne practiced it. Um, yes. I have videos in this playlist. <clears throat> watch this on the playlist to have a have a look at all the videos and and of course burn died i think in 1970 so yeah. 1972 would have been very very close to the original burning idea and then of course the arc of times come and there's been different schools and the relational relational ta isn't a particularly a school if i'm correct it's more of a kind of yeah yeah, yeah. so um, I know about ego grams because I was taught it in my person-centered oh, course. Wow, I did, wow. Yeah, it, it, and I did my person-centered course in 2002, wow. um, the first year. I was introduced to the ego grams. We had to do each other's ego grams. Great fun. Um, and, yeah. um, and it was very, very quickly you could find out about, A, your perception of yourself and other people's perception of, of, of you. <laughs> I do them in all my 101s, which is the introductory, first introductory course into uh, TA ones. And I've been doing this since 1986, and you're quite right. Yeah, yeah. Absolutely right. Think about uh, Jack Jusay, who, who I think is dead now. He was a great friend of Eric Burns, mm. and he was in Eric Burns' inner circle. And he, he every Tuesday night uh, from 1961 to you know, Eric Burns' death, um, uh, went to Eric Burns' seminars, seven o'clock to nine o'clock in Carmel, San Francisco. And I'm sure the idea of ego grounds came out of the late 60s behavioral school, just like you've just said, mm. where, uh, where, you know, strength in the adult was the key and uh, contracts were the key. And the behavioral part of transaction analysis was very popular. And this is a behavioural technique, so you, you, you're quite astute in picking that up. Definitely, definitely, definitely. Um, there's, there's no talk of the use of the relationship or no talk about uh, past and present. It's very focused on the distribution of energy across the different uh, functional ego states. Mm. Um, so let's just start off then. So um, before I came to TA therapist, I wanted to be a narrative therapist and a narrative therapist is basically helping people tell their stories of their lives and rewrite a different story now through my life as a ta therapist i learned about scripts and the idea that we actually 
you know, devise our own life plan, which you could call life story. If you can help a person develop their life plan or life story, you can help them develop their own different story. So it's quite akin to what I passionately wanted to do. And I use uh, these uh, egograms to help clients in their first session tell their story and review them every six months and looked at how they the goals they wanted to change so very simply um frank you say worked on the principle of what he called the constancy hypothesis there's a word for you constancy hypothesis that's a word to juddle with isn't it bob yeah and it's basically the idea that in our psychological uh, or a, a psychological energetic system uh, basically, our thoughts and our feelings that come from energy. Um, so if we look at where our energy is distributed uh, in the five ego states, and this is a functional model, the adapted child, free child, mm -hmm. adult, nurtured child, controlling parent, and we ask the person, right, do a bar graph yeah, of, of how much energy you have or you think that you store and use up from that part of yourself uh -huh. the idea was that we only have a fixed a fixed or finite part uh, of energy within our psychological organs or systems and so therefore if you take the energy out of one part of yourself you can distribute it into another part of yourself mm. so what you often found uh with clients and you described this in a bar graph and you said right okay how how do you see yourself in distribution of energy across the different parts of yourself? They would probably put a lot of energy into their critical parent. Yeah, yeah. Very, very little energy in a nurturing part of themselves. Uh, very little energy in the spontaneous free part of themselves, but a lot of energy in the adaptive side of yourself. And you could develop a story from that uh, how their energy was distributed in the different parts of themselves and then you'd ask them to draw uh, a, an ego gram of how they would like their energy distributed and invariably they 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 would say well i'd like a lot less energy in my critical parents of myself much more energy in self-care and nurturing myself mm -hmm. more spontaneity and less adapting yeah, yeah and then you say well ha what would need to happen to get to those achieved goals. So I found that very useful in terms of a narrative and a story and for them to understand, and it's a really fundamental, life-changing, pivotal understanding, if they can get to understand that they can actually choose to move their energy from one part of themselves to another. Yeah. So yeah. they can choose to change stop the, their own critical thoughts against themselves and move it into energetic nurturing of the self yeah it's, it's, it's as, you, as you're telling me this bob i'm taken back oh 12 uh, no tw nearly 20 years ago when i did my very first introduction to counseling and one of my one oh. of my teachers she put five chairs rather like the number the five dots on the dice yeah. one in the middle and two at each corner. Yeah, one of yeah, yeah. And, and I volunteered to sit in the middle. And having been told the functional model of the transactional analysis uh, ego states, I was at thrust um, to show where I was each part of the day. And I'd yeah. say, yeah, it was really, honestly, it was really good exercise. So I said, well, you know, I was, I was you know, I'd, I'd, I got someone carved me up in the car, so I sat in the critical parent and I was wagging nice. my finger. And, and then... <laughs> and then, uh, and then uh, and then I, uh, I, I went into the free child when I was by yeah. my luncheon. And I went back and forth and back and forth and I moved across. And at the end, she said, it's interesting, isn't it? Did you notice that you didn't actually sit in the nurturing parent chair? Ah, ah, well, there we are. Yeah, that's yeah. a big, big moment. Yeah, and I, and I also remember me saying that I'd forgotten my coat that day and it was raining. And um, she, she said, it's interesting when you said that. You're in, you're in the adapted child chair. Yeah. And you didn't think of sitting in the nurturing chair and saying, I really must bring a coat when it rains. <laughs> That's right. And what an awareness. And, yeah. uh, and you would do that through the egograms uh, and hopefully get to the point 
I'll just repeat it again because it's so important. The idea, which I'm, I suspect you got to, that actually you can change energy from one part of yourself to another part. Yes. So you change the critical energy or decrease it and put it into self-care and remember to bring the Mac next time you come. That's it. That's it. You know, it's a, it's a bit like having a kind of intelligent four-wheel drive system for your car, isn't it? Where, yeah, yeah. You, where you, can, you can put the, the wheels uh, in, in any energy configuration yeah. to help you where you need to be at that time, yeah. I, and it, it, one of my first clients in 1986, so I did an ego grammar, he, he, and I always remember this uh, because I don't know if I thought about it much myself, so this is wh why I remember this. He, he, it was a revolution. It was a revolutionary thought to him that you could organize your own psychological structure. Yeah. In other words, he believed that you just did things reactively and everything happened to him. But to actually take on board that you could structure your organizational thoughts from different parts of yourself so that you could behave in different ways changed his life yes seriously changed yeah, sure. his life because he started to do things from different parts of himself mm -hmm. his, his self-esteem his self-care the decrease of his uh, critical interjects his um uh, more energy in his spontaneity less adaptation in being perfect or antisocial they all changed Rory. yeah, yeah. fundamentally yeah yeah he gave him the gear well, stick. Well, in fact, the more I talk about it, I'm going to start using it again because was, yeah. it was so fundamentally useful. I'm, I'm just hearing you talk about it. I'm, I'm surprised that they've fallen out of favour because when you when you explained it, it didn't really feel like a behavioural intervention. It felt like a it felt like a a kind of relational intervention where you could kind of say, "Hey, you know, you you know, you have got this psychological gear stick where you can." literally put your, your your drive into different gears for different things right and people forget about the word relationship the word relationship or relational therapy however you want to describe it is about the use of relationships so all these techniques i've been talking about contracting or whatever it is we've been talking about in ta made simple videos if you use them within the relationship they cease to be techniques yes they become part of a relational dimension. Yes, you're absolutely right. So you're right. As you talk, uh, you're right. You could, you could, you see. If, if the difference in a technique is, if you said, "Go home then and come back," and da da da. If you, the relational would be, "Let's do it together." Yeah, yeah. yeah. And you can use ego games relationally. Yeah, yeah. Without this. Um, whole idea of you know they go off and do themselves always and it did become a technique then but you could use it relationally like the way I'm talking to you yes but they are so pivotal because they write it down and they then see on the second egogram oh I could change my energy from there to there and this will change my life yes and that is pivotal absolutely well, I mean, there we go. So I, I, I can feel that certainly in the, in the Bob Cook therapeutic engagement, there's, there's going to be a resurrection of Eva Grams. Eva Grams. Yep. And yep. Uh, I know you teach, so maybe you could encourage your students to use them relationally. They, they sound mighty powerful and really useful. And, and one of the things that strikes me is that they really give control to the client. They give yes. the, the gear stick of their psyche into the hand of the client they can shift those gears around oh. depending on where they need it absolutely Roy. Well, yeah. a wonderful tool eager grams jack you say uh in any of the ta books like ta made simple uh, sorry ta today by ian stewart yeah, yeah, yeah books all the book reviews any of those will talk about eager grams and just just do what just for the readers get a, get a dice just like what we talked about and <laughs> To say, right, okay, let's put you in different chairs and do the same sort of exercise, and actually, you would be doing a great favour. Yeah, you could do it. You could even do it at home if you watch. You stand in the middle, and then you know, think of you could put bits of paper on the floor, 
controlled yeah. parent, nurtured parent, free child, adapted child. And then just think of how you, how, where you were in your day, walk to those and just see which one you walked to the most. And crucially, as in my case, which one you didn't walk to at all. That's the bit. Yes. Yeah. That's the bit. That's the denial. Out of your awareness, what you didn't, that's absolutely correct. Yeah, yeah. That's pivotal change. Yeah, yeah. So there we go. Well, that's, that's really good. I'm sure that in households throughout the country, there's going to be bits of paper on the floor and people, people yeah. doing that like some kind of um, yeah. free dance experiment. But it's, uh, if you're a teacher, if you're watching this, great lesson. Um, I, lesson I used to teach. Um, and, and the awareness that learners used to come away with was just amazing as they went through maybe part of the day accessing the different ego states, just walking from one piece of paper to the other. So as always, Bob Cook, we thank you for your wisdom. And mm. I'm sure there'll be a few teachers uh, jotted a quick lesson plan down there Thanks, watching this. So you're welcome. <laughs> yeah, you are. It's great. <laughs> it's great. And uh, we'll catch you in the next one. What's the next one going to be, Bob? What's the next TA Made Simple? Oh, gosh, I don't know. I was thinking about it the other day. I know that Stephanie, who appeared on one last week, yeah. was talking about, I think, uh, the Cartman Triangle. Yeah, yeah. And, by the way, I was looking on the... Uh, She's had 120 views within one week of that. Uh, of that, uh, yeah, yeah. Made simple. She said she'd like to talk about uh, how she used TA techniques in the first session uh, of a meeting. So yeah, yeah. might incorporate her to talk about when a person walks in the door and what, what, what a TA therapist would look for. And I know with uh, Steph, she's got some very interesting ideas. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. We'll look forward to that. Um, so it's bye from me, and uh, I guess goodbye from Bob. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> That's bye. Absolutely bye bye. Bye bye.